My lovely, lovely imps, today I come bearing very, very strange news. Now, those of you who've been with me for a long time will know that I have covered and been a part of, in a very strange way, a magical uh, television, internet, sketch, comedy show for Catholics known as Holy Mackerel. Holy Mackerel has been a regular staple of my channel. It is some of the, if not the most funny and entertaining stuff that I've ever done on my show. And if you haven't seen any of my Holy Mackerel stuff, go to my channel, open up the Holy Mackerel playlist right now, and go start watching it. Because I guarantee you, you will laugh your butt off. Okay? It is, I am so proud of it. We have had a magical experience with Holy Mackerel. But the story is more complicated than Holy Mackerel, you see? Because Holy Mackerel is produced by a cult. I know, intriguing, right? A Catholic cult. A Catholic far-right cult. A Catholic far-right dissenter cult that has been formally denounced by the Catholic Church. Really intriguing, right? It gets even weirder. This cult we have been following alongside us following uh, uh, the Holy Mackerel Adventures for a very long time. This cult uh, is uh, was formerly the employer of one Milo Yiannopoulos, a name you might s immediately be familiar with, uh, the right-wing provocateur. Milo Yiannopoulos actually worked for and attended church at this cult for a very long time. And they've been embroiled in all kinds of strange political happenings. You might also know this cult from doing a uh, very, very messy and uh, uh, slanted uh, documentary exposing Jesse Lee Peterson for being a gay man. Really strange place, right? That's a lot of stuff. We've been following them for a long time. If you just church my, if you just church, <laughs> if you just search my channel for church militant, you will find everything that I have said on this particular group. And also, if you get tired of learning about the cult side, you can go and watch the sketch comedy show and me riffing off of it and all the fun we've had there and genuinely have had a great time with that. Very weird situation, okay? But today, something strange happened. So, earlier this year, uh, I covered a breaking news story, okay? And I'm going to show you this and post this in chat, and it'll be linked in my final video, okay? Uh, I made a video, which is called, We Watched a Cult Explode in Real Time. There you go. And here's the link. If you haven't seen this, go watch it now, okay? This cult had a disaster happen earlier, uh, actually late last year. It was December that we covered this. Uh, the, the summary of it is that the cult leader of the cult known as Church Militant was exposed for being gay. Now, he was already known for being an ex-homosexualist, is what he calls himself. Um, that's, in fact, what he built the cult around. He built the cult around him no longer being gay, and a lot of the members of the cult are other ex-gays. And you can imagine that this is, this was, uh, you know, uh, uh, always going to go one specific way, which is that none of them were going to stop being gay, all of them were still gay, and so was the cult leader. But not only was he just being gay, he was also uh, being very gay, and he was also uh, sending nudes to donors. Uh, many of whom did not want nudes from him, or at least they seemed to not want nudes from him. And uh, this landed him in hot water. 
and in fact, it led to the uh, it led to the complete dissolution of the leadership of this particular cult. Now, the cult claimed that they were going to continue operating without the founding member and his closest cadre of people, all of whom left. However, as time went on, it seemed more and more like this cult was not going to be able to recover from the loss of their founder, from the loss of their second in command, from the loss of some of their core members. And today, I discovered something. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to ask that you watch with me as I do this in real time. Ready? Oh, the, the chain is in the way here. Let me just, uh, here we go. Let me get this out of the way of the chain. Ready? Hold on. Whoop, whoop. Here we go. Watch. Okay, church militant. You, church, you search it and you go, huh, where's their, why is their website not coming up? Why is their website not coming up? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no. That's right. That's right. Today, their website went down. And it went way down. As in, every aspect of their website is now down. And... All of their YouTube videos on YouTube have their comments turned off now, which is new. They previously had lots and lots of comments. Um, I actually went there to go check and see if there were new episodes of Holy Mackerel that we could all enjoy, but it's done. So when I saw that, I jolted up out of my seat, ran up to my computer because I checked it on my phone, and I discovered that since the last time I checked into all this, because, you know, I don't exactly, like, check in on them frequently. Um, I, I check in every once in a while because I've covered them, you know, for a couple years. Excuse me. A hiccup there. Um, I've covered them for a couple years, so I check in every once in a while. And we missed some news. This was from the 6th of this month. Sorry, the 4th of this month. Catholic news site Church Militant agrees to pay 500000 in defamation case and is expected to close. A far-right, unofficial Catholic media website has agreed to pay $500,000 to a New Hampshire priest who sued for defamation over a 2019 article that it now disavows. The website is also planning to shut down soon, the priest's attorney says. The apology by Church Militant came after the organiza organization agreed last week to a federal court judgment in favor of the Reverend George Delaire, an official with the Diocese of Manchester. This legal setback comes just four months after its founder's resignation over a breach of its own morality clause. As part of the party's resolution, Church Militant has represented that it will be shutting down at the end of April. Attorney Howard Cooper from the Boston law firm Todd and Weld, which represented Delaire, said via email, St. Michael's Media, the parent firm for the Michigan-based news site, did not immediately confirm the shutdown plan to the Associated Press, and a phone message to its attorneys was not immediately returned. But the church militant website said it was closing its online store and having a Lenten liquidation sale of crucifixes, statues, books, and other items. Oh, yeah. Welcome, followers, to the Lenten liquidation sale. 50% off on crucifixes, 70% off on Mother Mary statues, and a brilliant 95% off on our devotional journals with, 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 with commentary from our lovely founder. Oh, incredible. Amazing. I wonder if they're going to be selling the, like, little Jesus statues they have around the office and stuff. Woof. Woof. 
Church Militant and its sleek newscasts drew a loyal following for years with a mix of fiercely right-wing politics and radically conservative Catholicism in which many of America's bishops were viewed with suspicion and disgust. It is not recognized as a church apostolate and uh, apostolate and lacks the authorization to promote itself as Catholic. They actually got in trouble over this, according to the Archdiocese of Detroit, whose territory in whose territory it is based. The legal settlement follows the November announcement that Michael Voris, who founded St. Michael's Media and its media outlet, was stepping down as president. The organization said it accepted his resignation due to his breaching the church militant morality clause without providing details. Now, the details that we found out after the fact were not provided directly but were actually provided by employees who left in protest um of his actions and uh boy was that a falling out we learned a lot about it and you can all see that in my previous video on uh, we go over everything we go into all the live streams of the former employees we go into the guy who leaked the official documents wild okay Dallaire also sued Voris individually. The court set an April 15 trial date, but Voris asked for an extension for medical reasons. The 2019 Church Militant article titled New Hampshire Vicar Changes Dogma into Heresy cast aspersions on Dallaire's emotional state, said he had botched cases he had handled and was a known troublemaker in the Vatican. All claims the site now acknowledges were not properly vetted. Dallaire is the judicial vicar of the Manchester Diocese. At the time, the article was posted anonymously. Church Militant now acknowledges that it was written by Mark Ballesteri, a canon, law, a canon lawyer, and said it could not substantiate the claims in the article. Church Militant stated that Ballesteri... Ballestri, wow, I can't even say his name. Ballestri, Ballestri, my bad. Didn't disclose his role in a dispute with the diocese, which would have raised questions about the motive for the article. St. Michael's Media sincerely apologizes for their part in any distress or damage they may have caused Father Delaire, it said Thursday on its website. Although St. Michael's Media didn't identify the specific case, Todd and Weld's statement said Balistrieri was representing a New Hampshire group, the Slaves of the Immaculate Heart of Mary and the St. Benedict Center. The Vatican said the group was, teach was a teaching outside of acceptable church doctrine, Doctrine and Dallaire followed with a decree in 2019 prohibiting the group from presenting itself as Roman Catholic or purporting to hold Roman Catholic ser services on its property. Balistrieri recognized Church Militant for agreeing to the settlement, saying in an email that he had been conditionally willing to testify in the case. He asserted that he is being made the scapegoat when he was actually acting as a whistleblower. He criticized St. Michael's Media for accepting the judgment. He said he's willing to testify when Voris's case comes to trial. Dallaire also sued Balistrieri individually. According to the case docket in the U.S. District Court of New Hampshire, the court clerk issued a default judgment against Balistrieri in 2002 after he failed to respond to the case. Balistrieri said by email he had received no effective communication from the court before then. Church Militant has had a long controversial role in the church, even with its unofficial status. Around the time that Michael Voris stepped down, articles on the site featured a climate crisis denier, criticized efforts at LGBT inclusion. Now, hold on, I need to clarify this real quick. When they say criticized efforts at LGBT inclusion, I want you to re realize that that is the biggest understatement that AP could have possibly said. Their... Um, their videos and articles about uh, LGBT inclusion were uh, screaming that uh, every that that people were going to hell. It was saying that there were um, they regularly accused uh, people who gay people without any evidence of being uh, uh, dangerous to children of being um, predators. Uh, it, it involved them saying that um, the inclusion of, of like gay people into the church at all was acts of sat Satan that were destroying the West. Uh, that they, they, they like I'm talking vitriol, okay? They didn't just criticize efforts at LGBTQ inclusion. These guys were the hardest line you can imagine. They literally worked with Milo Yiannopoulos in order to create a... Um, in order to create a uh, conversion therapy camp in Florida. That was, that was, they were backing him up on that. 
So these guys go really hard. They're not just like, they're not just critics, okay? These guys are, are absurd. Anyway, they gave a platform to Bishop Joseph Strickland, recently ousted from his Texas diocese by Pope Francis after his increasingly severe criticisms of the pontiff. In 2016, Voris acknowledged that when he was younger, he had for years been involved in living relationships with homosexual men and multiple other sexual relationships with men and women, actions he later abhorred as extremely sinful. In 2021, Voris's group was initially denied permission to rally outside a meeting of the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops in Baltimore, with city officials saying it posed a threat to public safety in part because they said the site promoted and exalted the January 6th insurrection at the U.S. Capitol. They, uh, <laughs> in my opinion, that's correct. They were gung-ho about January 6th, okay? Huge Trump heads. Loved Trump, okay? Voris claimed the city wrongly blocked the event because it disapproved of the group's message and a federal appeals court overturned the city's decision. Pretty understandable. Uh, even if uh, even if they promote and exalt uh, January 6th, uh, the free speech says you can, you can get together and protest most of the time. So that's, uh, that's, that's one article, okay? This is hardly the only article. That was AP News uh, article by Peter Smith. We also have, I mean, there's so many people uh, reporting on this, but that gives you basically all of the, 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 the factual a uh, summary of what's going on. So the website's down. The YouTube comments are all closed. We don't know if the YouTube channel will ultimately go down. The reality is that their YouTube content um, was extremely hateful, full of exaggerated statements um, about all kinds of people. I imagine they're I, I, and I don't know for sure because I haven't seen all their videos, but we've seen videos in which by name uh, they call out, quote unquote, um, specific members of the Catholic Church that they believe are predators. And their evidence of them being a predator is most frequently um, that they suspect that person of being gay. It's pretty bad, okay? And by the way, this is not the only lawsuit that they're tied up in. Uh, we know from my previous coverage, which you can go watch uh, in my uh, video that I posted and will have in the comments here, we know that they were also embroiled in a another lawsuit in which they were being countersued uh, after they claimed that someone criticizing them was defaming them. Now, uh, I don't know. Uh, whether or not they were going to win or lose that case. I don't, to my knowledge, it, it's not done yet. But uh, let's just say they were involved in a lot of legal troubles. They made a lot of claims about other people and they were very litigious and they do not have a track record of winning a lot of cases. Um, and now they're done. They ousted their own founder, their, uh, their primary uh, presenter Christine Niles left the organization. They had an employee walkout. Their website's gone. They shut down their store. And according to the statements from the lawyers of, uh, of that uh, one Catholic priest, they're done for. They're closing in April. And uh, what a wild ride it's been, right? What a wild ride it's been. I mean, there is more here. Uh, people are saying, oh, there's even more about it. Oh, absolutely. There's there's so much. It, it just, it doesn't stop, okay? Like, um, there's, 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 a, there's an article on Detroit Catholic about this. Church militant to shut down as defamation saga reignited, uh, ignited by radical traditionalist sect continues. This is from the Detroit Catholic newsletter. Like they're in on it too. They're like, they're like, holy shit, look at this. St. Michael's Media and Church Militant regret that the article was not properly vetted. There is probably dozens of articles on their website that fall into that exact category. Um, they have, they have uh, made accusations with incredibly shaky evidence against so many different people over the years. That's like the, that's like one of the, 
main parts of their of their content that they've done over the course of years is um, is, is basically pick a Catholic uh, a Catholic priest that they have a political issue with and try to accuse them of everything they possibly can. Now I don't know anything about these Catholic priests. Some of them might be bad people. I have no idea. But these guys go wild with it. Okay. I mean they're firing on all on all cylinders. And in the last few years, they have pivoted to basically being a culture war channel. Um, let me show you this real quick while, while we can still look at their stuff. If you go to their channel and we look at their most popular videos, you're going to see, here we go, Kamala's family, slave owners, uh, the devil in Hollywood. Hmm, Satan at the Vatican, arrest Bill Gates, the homosexual papacy, the Pope's new world order, St a stone cold killer, a video, a mo a video about uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, the Joe Biden lie, half of priests and bishops are gay. Do you see what I'm saying? FBI Freemasonry and Coulter and Catholics they, quote unquote, are not the church. And it's got a priest with a pussy hat, a priest with a rainbow, a rainbow pin, and a, and a communist priest. Jesus and Joe Biden. Baron bishops running scared. Here's, here's another one. See, this is one of those videos here where this will be them making accusations against various bishops. The George Soros swamps. Yeah. Gay, the gay mafia, homo communist, clerical cesspool, Satan's fake church, the Pope and sodomy. You can see what they're at. You can see what their, their whole kind of gimmick is. These guys have pivoted in recent years from, uh, basically, you know, being a, a harassment organization to being a harassment organization, in my opinion, uh, that also does a a bunch of just culture war hate content. Um, we've watched a ton of their videos in the past. Um, oh my God, wait, here it is. Look at this. Milo does Vortex. What a title. Uh, I covered this video. Go check it out on my channel. Seriously. Uh, this, is, this is the video in which Milo Yiannopoulos is interviewed by the founder of this cult and it is the most sexually tense. I mean, it's called Milo Does Vortex, first of all. Um, and it's all about how he's not gay anymore. It's a, it's wild, okay? they He retells the story of them having a private hotel room prayer session where he's sweating and shaking by the end. So you tell me what you think is probably going on in that uh between those two guys all right wild all right oh here we go sodomitic filth here's another video from them so sodomitic filth that's a wild one yeah arrest the democrats the gay democratic bishops episcopal sodomy gay seminarian pipeline you kind of get the idea. You kind of get the idea of what they've been up to. Anyway, uh, yeah, they're uh, they're done. It's over. Their their path of hatred and derangement has come to an end. It's been a wild thing to watch, right? We've seen them do so many things over the years. It's been like three years of seeing their stuff talking about how they were maneuvering and it all came crumbling down in 2024. And of course, as I mentioned at the beginning, this is going to impact holy mackerel because I strongly, strongly doubt that holy mackerel will be continued anywhere else. Um, Holy Mackerel was a project made by some of the people who worked at Church Militant. Um, 
I am going to be reaching out to try and see if they're okay with me uh, maybe hosting uh, or, or something or perhaps even continuing Holy Mackerel uh, because Holy Mackerel is incredible. Um, you might be wondering, well, Demon Mama, why the hell would you want anything to do with uh, something made by such a vile cult? And the answer is because Holy Mackerel was incredible. Uh, as it turns out, people with extremely terrible beliefs can sometimes do something decent. And Holy Mackerel was that something de decent. It is a, uh, it's a goof. And, uh, and it was great. And also, they said trans people are, uh, they said, they said trans people are valid, which, you know, I'm always going to be, I'm always going to be there for that. They might not have meant to, but they did say it. They do have a, they do have a uh, trans women are real women uh, episode, which is interesting because I wouldn't have expected that, especially given the way that they post on social media. Uh, but I am going to reach out and see uh, if, if I can purchase the rights to Holy Mackerel because um, I would like to maintain a, a archive of those videos. The good news is, is that those videos don't have any of the um, anti-gay, um, they don't really have any of the anti-gay stuff in, the, in it. It's mostly just goofs about uh, general Catholicism. It's basically like Veggie Tales. Um, but this is going to be the, this will be the end of it. Unless, unless there's like some Holy Mackerel website that pops up, but I can't imagine it will. All of the people involved with Holy Mackerel were people uh, who were directly involved with Church Militant and worked there. And they seem to make it in their off time at the job with the equipment that they had. Church Militant had a crazy expensive studio. I'm talking, they had, they had like top level production uh, 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 cranes and, and dolly tracks. They had, uh, you know, uh, what is it called? Stable cam steady cams. They had steady cams. They had uh, the snorri cam, like the little helmets that let you do first person. And they would use this stuff to make holy mackerel. I can't imagine they're going to continue making it now that they don't have access to any of that or the editing stuff. It's, uh, so I'm definitely going to reach out and see. And I'm going to reach out in good faith because I, while I feel like church militant itself is a truly malignant force in this world. A organization that uh, set out to uh, torment, spread misinformation and hatred. Uh, a, an organization that um, enabled terrible, terrible, deceitful people. Um, an organization that uh, engaged in frivolous lawsuits and defamation. Um, and mostly served to basically be foot soldiers for uh, the most malignant right-wing forces in this country. Holy mackerel was something special. And uh, it's a shame to see the, our, our lovely fish get buried under all the rubble, even though the building definitely needed to come down. There was a rot deep within that organization. Um... Groups like this, uh, groups like this are rare. Churches that, that are uh, hateful are not rare, unfortunately. There is a, especially right now, in American Christianity, there is a deep rot. Um, I am not a Christian, but I grew up very, very Christian. I grew up in a cult, um, and I spent the majority of my life um, as a Christian, um, who was very devout. Um, and I came to my own understanding, uh, that, that, that I did not believe, uh, and that that type of belief was not for me, um, on my own grounds. Once I was able to leave the sort of, uh, extremely aggressive church that I was a part of, um, I've talked about this on my channel in a video, uh, called my spiritual deconstruction which I talk about my experience of, of leaving the church and finding my own beliefs in the world um, and why I, uh, 
why even despite being so faithful and so well read in Christianity, why I decided. In fact, I, I would even argue that for me, uh, the more I understood Christianity, the less I believed in it. Um, the more I researched it, the more that I read the Bible itself, um, the less that I believed in it. But um, what I'm trying to say here is that churches that are hateful are very common in America right now. The, the Christian uh, milieu in the United States is one that is obsessed. It has been seized by capital and it has been seized by right-wing politics. Uh, and Christianity has always had uh, tons and tons of right-wing elements to it. It is arguably intrinsically right-wing. Um, Christianity as a religion, you know, d uh, Christianity as a religion uh, asserts that there is an ultimate hierarchy of beings. Um, and it's pretty hard to divorce from that. There are people who interpret it differently. There are some people who basically say, sure, there might be a cosmic hierarchy, you know, God is above man, but that all humanity is supposed to be equal. There should be no hierarchies among humans. Some people interpret it that way. That is not the majority position. However, modern Christianity um, has been so swallowed by the political machine of capital uh, that most churches do not function as uh, places of faith, but instead of places of directed political radicalization. These churches are designed to raise money, to drive money and energy into right-wing political power, to consolidate power for various figures. And, um, and with that in mind, uh, organizations like Church Militant represent uh, outgrowths of that hate. But very few of those can actually manage to maintain, uh, to maintain such deep connections and also uh, funding. Church Militant had an incredible amount of funding. The, the videos that they were putting out were expensive to produce, high production value videos um, that were d misleading and deceptive propaganda. And most churches cannot do that. So it's a good thing that a group like Church Militant is no longer operating. It's a good thing for basically everyone and I would argue that it's a good thing even for Christians. Um, groups like Church Militant uh, seek to, through the veil of extreme religiosity, uh, through a performative extreme religiosity, they seek to subjugate religion uh, and, and faith into uh, a, a political machine for the likes of Donald Trump. And that is what most of their shit boiled down to in the end. Most of everything that they made boiled down to, well, you should support Donald Trump. We need to participate in the in the culture war in order to support Donald Trump, in order to support the Republicans. Um, and for all of their uh, for all of their claims of of dissent, you know, they dissent from the Pope, they dissent from Vatican II, they dissent from from the norm. They fold right back into it, almost as if. Uh, you know, it's just the illusion of choice that these guys just did a little bit more flagellation and a little bit more, uh, you know, bloody knees from praying and a little bit more, oh, Lord, hear me. But in the end, you're just your faith is being driven into a very particular end. And also, of course, let us not forget that more, perhaps even more impactfully, uh, that these types of organizations serve to turn faith into hatred. They take someone's belief in God. They take someone's belief in a greater power. They take someone's belief in eternal love or forgiveness, and they turn it into a justification to hate someone else on political lines. That it's, uh, you know, Christianity is no longer the, the religion of love. It's a religion of you need to fight against gays taking over the world. You need to fight against uh, uh, 
uh, diversity and inclusion taking over the world. You need to save Western civilization in the name of God, as if God cares about Western civilization. Don't you think that the God of the Bible, if genuinely interpreted, would have bigger things to worry about than the kingdoms of man? This is something that has always upset me as somebody who uh, spent most of my life as a devout Christian. When I look at these types of groups, I, uh, I, I, it, 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 it disgusts me. And it's actually a part of what let, what led me away from, from churches before I left Christianity entirely. When I stopped participating in the extreme churches that my parents had raised me in, the reason for that was because I looked at their actions. I can tell a story, in fact. I remember when I decided I no longer wanted to go to church at all. I had gone back home from college to visit my family. And I was still a Christian at this point. And my dad wanted us all to go to a Christmas service at uh, a church that was affiliated with the church with the the church that we grew up grew up in. So we were going to go travel to another sister church basically. Um, and, uh, when we went to this church, sorry, I got a little distracted. There was uh, somebody in chat. Um, if anybody, if any of our mods can go uh, check chat, um, just, just go ahead. Uh, anyway, uh, my, my dad was like, we're going to go to a Christmas service at this larger church. And I was like, okay, let's go. So we did a whole drive. We drove across the state. And we went to this other church. And while I was sitting there, um, I had gone to film, uh, you know, I had been in film school for like a year at that point. Um, uh, obviously, you can probably tell I'm a bit of a film kid. Um, I was sitting there and waiting, and they were doing a, the sort of, everybody's getting into your seats, there's like a whole thing. And uh, they had this huge stage, okay? And they had a dozen maybe 15 different cameras set up. And these cameras were uh, the, the highest end cameras that you could possibly imagine, okay? These cameras were fully mounted platforms, okay? Not just, not just uh, you know, your nice tripods with a camera on top. I'm talking fully mounted television broadcast assisted, uh, you know, uh, machine assisted movement and quieting, so it was, we're talking tons of them, okay? Millions of dollars in camera equipment. Next to where the 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 the, the, uh, the uh, sermon was happening, they had a winter festival in which they had carted in snow from out of state. This is a southern state. So they had brought snow in from mountains a, a, somewhere else in another state. They brought it in so that you could go, you could you could literally ski for Jesus, okay? Not even joking, okay? And I'm sitting here looking at this. And the sermon begins, and when they start the sermon, the first thing that they start with is an advertisement for their missionary division, immediately asking people to give their money to help starving children in Africa. And they had pictures of starving children in Africa in their professionally produced advertisement for their missionary uh, program. And... I remember this moment so clearly. I don't even remember the rest of the sermon. I can't even remember the rest of it, but I remember this moment so well because I was sitting there going, right behind me, there is a million dollars worth of cameras. They could sell one of these cameras and feed every children on the, in that video for the rest of their life for one of these fucking cameras. They could have skipped the carting in the snow and put that $50,000 for the Skiing for Jesus set up into their program to help starving children in Africa. But no, instead they want you to give money to their church so that they can do it for you. All, uh, you know, they want you to be a part of the system. They want you to be a part of their organization to keep lifting those people up that are at the top. And I remember seeing that and going, there are many people in this audience who truly believe in God, 
and I counted myself among them. And their faith is being exploited for the delusions, for the, the delusions of grandeur of a handful of people and the cushy careers of a handful of people. And I happen to know that the salaries of the pastors and the leadership and the administration of that, of that church is very, very comfortable. These guys lived in enormous houses. They lived lavish lives, okay? And, uh, and I was like, I'm done. I'm done being a part of these churches. And it was some time later that I decided to leave Christianity entirely. Um, but that was the moment that I said that I was done with the churches. And groups like Church Militant do that. And more specifically, they do that with hate. They want to take people's genuine belief, their energy, their creative passions, their lifeblood, their time, their money. And they want to direct it towards the, the disgust of, of their leadership, whatever their leader is, is mad at or what he hates or what he struggles with. Because, of course, now we know that all this whole time, you know, hating gay people, he's still been being gay. It's all a big game of self-hate. And he involved his entire church years. What, 15 years church militant has existed? And 15 years they've taken money and produced hateful things about gay people, attacks against gay people, attacks against trans people. And some of the people who are there are genuine believers. So I think it's good the church militant is done for. I think it's, it's good that they've closed their doors, that they will no longer be a nexus for producing hate. And I think it's good even though I am going to miss holy mackerel. And even though I do have positive memories of laughing with and at and being laughed back at a little bit, we got roasted. We're as the only people on the internet who have really covered holy mackerel. We got, we got toasted when they did that, when they did the episode making fun of people, uh, making fun of the critics. We got roasted and it was good. We had some fun with that, but you know, church militant was a blight and uh, what they were doing in the world was blighted and sick. So that's the end. That's it. They're done. They've closed their doors. Now, I imagine some of them might go on and do other things, but when something like this, when the wind, when the soul goes out of something like this, uh, it's hard. You can't capture it back. I said this similarly about Rush Limbaugh, you know, that Rush Limbaugh represented an extraordinary figure uh, for right-wing politics. And you don't get that type of, of power structure. You don't get that type of, um, of sinister cunning very often, um, in, even in those movements. They can't cultivate that. You can't just have somebody with that level of a uh, dement, demented drive for control and for uh, a specific way of navigating that consolidates power towards a specific end. And Church Militant was one of them, uh, and they're gone. And uh, much like with when Rush Limbaugh departed, I think that that's to the benefit of the vast majority of people uh, in America, if not the world. Um, I don't know about, maybe not for Church Militant, but for Rush Limbaugh, that was true. For Church Militant, it's going to mostly be um, a, a, a weakening of a true uh, hate movement. Um, yeah, so. Everyone, let's take a moment and look back on, on all of the wildness that, that we had with uh, with them over the years. You guys remember when we when we watched their uh, their infomercials for Jesus? You guys remember this? Yeah, let me bring it up. Look, it's even got the old thumbnail style, the old the old gloobies. They're so good. They're so so good. <laughs>
and every straight person is like, I don't know, I don't buy it. Oh, my videos were so quiet. But every gay person in chat, you know exactly what I'm saying. There's Milo, the adoring virgin statue, cold cast poly resin in bronze or silver. Thing is true. This guy was on top of the world, and now he's selling Jesus statues? Mmm, no. There's something in it for him. Daddy is gonna give him a firm hand and maybe put him in the Christ cage. <laughs> maybe he gets to spend the night in the Christ cage. If he's Damn, I stopped it at the best moment! <laughs> Very good. They've been creating- <laughs> Principal Skinner voice. Mmm, but what if I pass my fetish off as a grift? Guys, it's more common than you might think. <laughs> Woo! I was cooking. I was cooking. The people at home mm -hmm. that are not necessarily cast in metals because it's so inconvenient and also can be dangerous when you have kids around. You know, right, you right, can right. do serious injuries to children when you've got big <laughs> hunks of, uh, of metal on the table, especially with sharp edges and things. Sure. This stuff is, um, if you've ever had one of these Amazing. That was one of the best. And of course, you know, I would be remiss to not bring up the the interviews. Which we watched in my most recent one. The one that I had here. It's polyresin? Yeah, of course. Which we did here. In this one. People are going to write. Of course, we, we watched this one. To you and say, he hasn't changed when I make this joke. But, you know, I'm always deflecting into humor. and other things I do to get in my own way. And I was thinking, I was there having like these, this prickling feeling. And I'm like, oh, menopause. Um, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I, it, being here has mattered to me already. And uh, I don't know when this goes out, but I probably haven't left yet. But uh, it, it's mattered to me and it's meant something. So it's sort of, uh, extra, not, not to, I hate to pay you too many compliments because uh, oh, no, no. you Oh, we got the holy. We got the special helper clip. Uh, let's do the special helper. And of course, where would we be without holy mackerel? It's not easy, you know. You know how hard it is coming back to the faith after all these years. And I get here to Ferndale, Michigan. It's bad enough being Michael Voris's special helper. Oh, they, they all knew. They were all in on it. This was, they were all cashing out. They knew. Every one of them knew. Everyone. Okay, not everyone. Okay, so, like, she knew. Shop lady knew, for sure. She, she hated Milo. Oh my god, it was so funny. Oh, what a wild ride it's been. Oh, you guys remember God-given right to a mommy? I think I got that one still here somewhere. Willfully depriving that little boy of his God-given right to a mommy. That one used to be on the soundboard. Willfully depriving that little boy of his God-given right to a mommy. Willfully depriving that little boy of his God-given right to a mommy. Incredible. Uh, the good news is, we have archived Holy Mackerel. So even if Church Militant is gone, which is probably for the best for everyone, uh, Holy Mackerel will never be gone. We have an archive of my own, and, uh, and also we archived it on the uh, Internet Archive. So uh, if you ever want to see it, it's there. There's not much else for me to say about this. Uh, uh, honestly, uh, we knew that there was a very good chance that Holy Mackerel was going to be gone forever. Um, I wonder. Let's see. I really, I wonder. I wonder if there's any... I want to know if there's any other... Hold on, let's see. I want to see if there's anything else. The only thing that comes up is their official channel. I can't believe we called it so hard.
yeah, there's nothing, nothing on the web. It's all just on their YouTube channel now. Somebody did make a fandom page for it, which is, somebody made a fandom, was that one of us? This has got to be one of us. Somebody did this. Somebody from our community did this. Welcome to the Holy Mackerel Wiki. The only place in the world where 12, Canon 1251 comes to like life. Somebody made a fandom wiki. It could have been them. They might have done it too. It is really funny that there's a wiki. If it was one of us, I need to know who it is. You don't have to openly confess, but you've got to send me an email. Okay, it's really simple, to be fair. It's just got summaries of the episodes. Church, church militant has fallen in hard times, calling them to, causing them to cancel Adobe products. Shane pulls a prank on JP that goes too far. We watched this one. Uh, the, the most niche fandom. We're literally, to my knowledge, we're the only people who have... Uh, oh, wait, I wonder... Hold on. The creator has not posted anything about it on social media, at least that I know of. Uh... Uh, okay, do you want to see, do you want to see something really upset? <laughs> okay, don't, whatever you do, don't go to their social media. Okay, here's the last one. Wait, Holy Mackerel. The Holy Mackerel official page. Two days until Good Friday. This upcoming Friday is Good Friday. Although it's a fasting day, it is in fact good. Reminder, it's Friday once again. You must abstain from eating meat. Enjoy today, for tomorrow you shall fast from meat. Holy shit. As of 10 hours ago, Holy Mackerel did tweet. Oh my god. Oh my god. He's alive. He survived the crumble. Well, who knows. I guess I'm sure they'll probably post if they do more stuff here, but I really doubt that they will. Uh, the good news is I do know the creator's social... Okay, I shouldn't say the good news. I do know the creator's social media, so I'll, I'll reach out to him and see uh, if I can get, you know, permission to, like... I don't know. I doubt they're going to want to sell me the rights, but, you know, maybe I can get their blessing to make some you know, related stuff as a tribute because I, uh, I would, I would like to do that. I would like to do that. Kind of wild that he's still tweeting even after their website went down. It could also be a fan account. Who knows? They might not have been, uh, they might not be in on the, uh, who do they follow? Okay. So they're following people from there. Yeah. This might be a fan page. I'm looking real quick at their following. Some of the people I recognize from the show. Anyway, I don't want to ramble too much uh, anymore about this. The reality is Church Militant is done for. They're done. Holy mackerel, the show is probably going to be gone too. However, I am going to at least try to, in good faith, and I mean that, in good faith, uh, uh, reach out and see if maybe we can't do something uh maybe maybe we can't because I, I don't want us i don't i don't like the idea of of uh of just ripping it you know what i mean i'd prefer i'd prefer to be able to say hey we've had a lot of fun laughing at your little skit show we definitely do not see eye to eye on politics but uh maybe you know out of a mutual appreciation for the fish maybe we can work out a little deal or something because I'd love to see this, uh, you know, I'd love to see it not become lost media. Anyway, thank you all for watching. If you are not subscribed to Demon Mama, you got to subscribe. We talk about all kinds of stuff. We talk about 
uh, media, we talk about news, we talk about politics, and of course, well, we used to talk about holy mackerel. Anyway, thanks for watching. Make sure you're subscribed.